Hey guys, this is Tristan with Victorious Games. Today I'm going to share with you a couple extensions that I just uh, finished. They are the toggle switch extension and the checkbox extension. And let's start by showing you how you would use these in a real game. The first thing you want to do to add one of these extensions to your game is to click on functions behaviors, search for new extensions. And if you just search for UI for user interface, uh, it'll show up these three extensions. Uh, there'll probably be more in the future, but um, let's get the checkbox installed. Let's get the toggle switch installed. And while we're at it, let's just do the, the slider. Okay, now we've got all three installed. We'll close this. We're going to create a brand new scene. The way you do these um, UI elements, you need to start with a shape painter object. So we'll do new object from scratch, shape painter. Let's just do, let's call it checkbox. And you don't need to worry about any of these settings. The only thing you need to do is go to behaviors, add behavior, and then we're going to do checkbox. And you can change these things. This is how you're going to change the look of your checkbox. But let's just see what the default checkbox looks like. We'll put it up there at the top. We'll do the same thing for the toggle switch. Behavior, add the toggle switch behavior. And then we will do a slider too. Shape painter, call it slider. Behavior add behavior to the object, the draggable slider control. Okay, so toggle switch will go here and the slide will be on the bottom. Okay, if we hit play, we should see these default, the default look for these objects. So the uh, checkbox has a halo that will go show the users that it's touchable or inter you can interact with it. And this is the toggle, it also has a similar halo when you mouse over it. And you just click it once, it goes on and off. It's the same logic as on off on the checkbox. The slider, I think I've shown in previous videos, but now that you've got these objects created, I wanted to show you a little bit how you can reference them in actions or in events. So for conditions, the most important thing you're probably gonna want to know is the value, is, it, is the checkbox checked? The toggle switch is also the same. Is it checked? That's the most commonly used thing. Um, disabled, I also have the uh, property of, uh, these can be disabled. So if you want to show a checkbox, but you don't want the user to be able to turn it off or on, like you want to be something to be statically turned on, you can, you can check it and disable it, or uncheck it and disable it, and the users won't be able to change it by clicking on it. Let's look at the actions. So you can change quite a few things using actions. I tried to do it so that as many properties as possible can be changed. One of the most important things you want you're going to do on checkbox is change the checkbox to the opposite state. This is basically toggling. So if the checkbox gets clicked on, you can just do this and it'll change it from checked to unchecked or unchecked to checked. So this is the most commonly used thing you're going to use. It's available on both the checkbox and the toggle switch. Change toggle switch to opposite state. If you want to just set something, so like at the beginning of the game, you want to uh, check something, you would use check or uncheck the toggle switch and then say checked yes or no. And so that's how you can change the state of it uh, in the middle of a game. For slider, I will mention that the most valuable thing is the value of the slider. The value of a slider is between 0 and 1. So if you wanted to start off with something in the middle, you would just set the slider value to 0.5, for instance. In fact, let's see if we can make this beginning of the scene. Set the value of the slider to 0.5. This should start in the middle now. Uh, by default, it starts here, and if we set this to 1, it's at the right side. 
So that can be useful for depending on what you want to do. Okay, let's look at some of the different ways that you can make these new extensions look. Okay, in this example, I have a bunch of toggle switches that are in their default look. If you want to see what they could look like, I have a, a kind of like a randomizer, changes a lot, almost all of their variables. You can change their width, their length, the, the halo size. Uh, there's actually a drop shadow underneath these. So that's toggle switch. Let's look at the checkbox. This is the default look of the checkboxes. One thing I will note about the checkboxes is kind of an issue you'll have to consider. There's these um, diagonal lines, straight lines. This is a side length of 24 and a line length of 5. If you change some of these variables, you, you're going to see some jagged edges. So when you're creating your game, if you are going to change the size of these checkboxes, you will want to find the right length and line width that has kind of a, a look that's kind of straight. The default is 24 and 5. These look great. They're, they're, they're not jagged. And you can't change the colors. Let me know if you have any ideas for new extensions you would like to see created. We also would love to have other people help create these. We've got a team of volunteers that are doing a great job of coming up with extension ideas and implementing them. And I always say that if you can create a, a game in GDevelop, you can create an extension. The process is almost exactly the same. Let me know if you're interested, and we will get you started. Have a great day, guys. Bye.